Hello, today we're going to be looking at the DJI Ronin SC. Logo. So right off the bat, you can see that this gimbal comes in a very sturdy and firm foam casing. So I am guessing this foam casing can withstand a bit of knocking around without damaging the equipment inside. Now, once you open this with two latches on the side, we can see that the inside of the briefcase is very tightly packed, very nicely organized. They have compartments for wires, for tools. So in general, if you're gonna be shaking this case around a bit, these components inside won't move. Now, it is important to note that the kit that I have includes the uh, focus motor and the uh, focus wheel. Those usually aren't included unless you ask for it. Now, let's get all the components out and lay them out on the table so that we can see what everything does. So here are most of the main components of this gimbal. We have your main uh, stabilizer here. We have the grip, which also contains the battery. We have the phone holder, which can mount either on the side of this or on your camera. We have this extended grip that also will open up into a tripod. And we have various smaller platforms and the focus wheel assembly. Notice that if you do get the kit that has the focus wheel, the uh, focus wheel will already be installed on the handle. And this little pouch over here contains all the tools you'll need to uh, assemble and balance the stabilizer and also a bunch of extra screws in case you lose them. Now, a very important thing to notice about this gimbal is that the main platform actually comes with all the axes locked. And this is good because this means that the motors are less likely to be damaged when it's being transported. Now the assembly of this gimbal is pretty intuitive and most of it is pretty well documented in the instruction manual, so I won't go too much into it. The first thing you want to do is you want to attach this battery grip to the main platform. Before you do that, first make sure that this little lock lever on the bottom of the uh, gimbal is pushed to the unlocked position. And now, once it's unlocked, you should be able to just slide this like that. And then make sure you push the lever back to the locked position so that it stays put. Now once you have done that, I would recommend for setting up this gimbal, you uh, use this tripod attachment so that you can have this whole thing upright in front of you to work with. So to attach this, you just kind of screw it in just like you're screwing in a normal tripod. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then you can just spread its legs and put it on the table. Now the next thing I would like to do is I would like to put this top part into what I call the ready position. So I'm going to unlock each axis and I'm going to move each axis to the position that I would want them to be once my camera is mounted. So what that means is that I want this part of the platform which holds the camera to be flat so that I can later mount the camera on easily. So it would look something like this and very conveniently if you flip the lock back on it will lock in place this configuration that you have because this is one of the standard uh, positions. So once it's locked like this, you can very easily mount a camera on here without having the whole thing going all wobbly on you. Now, once you have it in this state, you can go ahead and leave it be for a while and maybe plug it into a charger. You can charge the gimbal with this little port in front here from a uh, USB-C cable, but make sure that you have the battery grip connected to the top because otherwise it won't charge. And to see how much battery you have left, there is this little button here that you can press that will show you kind of like the bars of battery you have. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to go and attach these attachments to the camera. So first of all, an important thing to note is that this camera that I have right here is a Canon EOS 80D. And this is actually technically not on the compatibility list of this gimbal. Basically what this means is that all of the stabilizing features work perfectly. You just can't uh, control the camera from the gimbal. You have to use the camera interface for any kind of camera related controls. If being able to control the camera from the gimbal is really important to you, then you'd want to get the Ronin S instead of the Ronin SC. Because Ronin S is rated for heavier cameras and it's also compatible with more cameras. 
Now, with that out of the way, we can start mounting. So first thing is to mount this very familiar tripod uh, platform to the bottom of the camera. To mount the platform, you just kind of screw this into the tripod uh, mount of your camera very tightly. Make sure that the uh, rectangle is kind of vertical with respect to the camera, and I will explain why later. So make sure that this is vertical. Now the second one, as you can see, has this little ruler back here that says light or heavy. So use your judgment. Light is around uh, one kilogram and heavy is around like three kilogram. So you want this screw when you mount this camera to be more or less at the marking that says how heavy your camera is. And also very important is that there is this little arrow on the bottom that says lens. So this arrow needs to be pointing in the direction where the lens is. So it would be that way. Now the next step is to mount the uh, focus motor. So the focus motor is gonna be mounted at the front here with a bit of help from some uh, other kind of rigs that will hold it at the correct position to turn the lens. This thing goes on the front of this little uh, rail that we just mounted on. And as you can see, there are a bunch of little holes here. You can kind of mount it however you want using the uh, given, uh, given wrench and the screws. Now that you have the horizontal beam kind of mounted, the next thing you want is this rod that will kind of slide through this bracket in the beam. This uh, rod will be what your focus motor is going to be mounted onto. And now the next thing you want to do is that you want to slide this focus motor through the rail onto um, the camera and you want the skier to align with whatever kind of focus ring your camera has. Now the gimbal does come with this kind of um, flexible gear focus puller that you can attach to a lens for lenses that don't have much grip on their focus wheels. But with this camera from experience, I've noticed that just using the gears on this focus ring is good enough. So once you have the teeth of the gear aligned with the, uh, the focus ring, you can go ahead and tighten the uh, focus puller. Now your camera rig is pretty much done. Now to test it, you can turn this focus wheel a little and you can see that the lens uh, focus ring is turning with it. So we know that it's working. Now one last thing to attach is this little uh, box here. So this is a, a controller for the focus puller. So all you have to do is attach this little square to the front of this little bracket that you already have with a, uh, another screw, basically. And once you have this kind of mounted in the front in some way, you can get creative with it depending on what your setup looks like. You can plug this into the uh, focus motor and the other side of this will actually go on to uh, here. And at this point, we're pretty much ready to put the camera on the gimbal and start balancing. Now to balance this, there is this little uh, knob down here underneath the camera platform. You want to loosen that first so that the camera can slide in here. But once you do that, you just kind of take the camera and you slide it backwards from the front and you will hear this little click like that. And then you're done. Now you can tighten this little screw down here now, but not too much because you're going to have to loosen it again to do the balancing. Also, while you're doing this, you can plug the other end of the uh, focus motor controller into a little slot that's on the arm. You'll see it when you look at it. Now there are three axes on this gimbal. There's the pan axis that goes like this. There is the tilt axis that goes like this. And then there's the roll axis that goes like this. So we want to be balancing each of those axes individually. So the first axis we want to do is the tilt axis. We can unlock the tilt axis and kind of let go of it and see where it goes. Now it's pointing a bit up, so I am going to loosen this bottom platform and slide the camera forward a tiny bit until the camera is pointing forward. Now that this is done, I am going to retighten the bottom uh, knob and I am going to tilt the camera upwards. And I am going to adjust this arm so that the camera will stay facing upwards without me touching it. So something like 
this is fine. When I let go, it should continue to point upwards. Now I lock this little knob and I flip it back to face the front again and do any just adjustment as needed. Once this is done, I can tighten this bottom knob a bit and we're now good with our tilt axis. Now for the roll axis, it's a similar thing. I am going to lock my tilt axis now and I'm going to unlock my roll axis. And now you can see that it's rolling a bit to the right. So I'm going to untighten the same knob under here and I'm going to push the whole camera slightly leftward. And only just a tiny movement will do a lot. So yeah, this is good. I'm going to leave it here. And now we can tighten this knob for good because we won't need to change this anymore. Now the pan axis is um, something that you usually don't need to worry about that much, but we will unlock the pan axis like this, and then we will pick up the gimbal and kind of lean it sideways and see where it falls. So as you can see, when I lean it sideways, it went kind of in this direction. So I am going to shift this arm underneath a little bit and try again. Still going a bit this way, let's pull it back a bit more. And now we're good. No matter how I tilt it, it stays more or less where it is. Now basically what we just did here is that we have found the camera's center of mass. Now the reason we do this is so that the gimbal doesn't have to work very hard just to keep the camera pointed straight and level. Now that we're done, we can go ahead and unlock all of the axes. Don't worry if it flops around a bit, um, it will stabilize. This is a stabilizer. And you can hold the power button on the side of the handle to turn it on. And it is on. As you can see, it is stabilizing. Now carrying this rig around will give you a pretty good arm workout. It's a pretty heavy rig. And just to test, now my focus uh, polar has a green light on, which means that it is correctly connected to the focus motor. So now if I rotate the uh, this wheel here, the focus ring on the camera does indeed rotate. If you look at it from the front, I am rotating the focus wheel and the focus motor is doing exactly what my hand is doing. There are a lot of other cool things that this gimbal can do once you connect it to some other device. So connect pretty simply via Bluetooth. And once you're connected, you can do things like using your device as a virtual joystick to control its movement. You can also use another device to control the focus. I don't know how well you can see that, but the focus motor is turning as I am turning it. And now this third thing is my favorite because what it allows me to do is that it allows me to control my camera via tilt from this device. So now that I'm gonna turn it on and you'll see what I mean. Pretty cool. Now there is also the functionality of following. So that involves mounting this to the camera and attaching your phone here and the gimbal is going to use your phone's camera to follow the subject. Now, I'm not going to do this right now because I'm using my phone to record, but it works very intuitively. You just draw a box around the subject you want to follow and it will use the gimbal to try to follow that subject. There are a lot of ways to configure your gimbal. In this mode, the gimbal follows both your tilt and pan movements in a more smooth manner. The pan follow only mode will follow your pan movements, but will keep the camera pointed at the same horizontal plane. The flashlight mode, as the name suggests, will make the camera behave as if it was rigidly connected to the gimbal. Now these modes aren't fixed, because you can configure each motor the way you want them to, to make the gimbal behave the way you want it to. Alright, now you've listened to me talk long enough, let's take this out for a test drive.